Hello, this is Dr. Grant Cooper at Princeton Spine and Joint Center. In today's video, I'd like to address when you should get imaging studies for neck and radiating arm pain, also known as a cervical radiculopathy, and which imaging study is the best to get. Should you get, for example, an x-ray, an MRI, a CAT scan, ultrasound? First, I need to pause for a moment to remind you to please like this video and please subscribe to our channel to help us continue to grow and hopefully to reach and help more people. Okay, let's talk about imaging studies and neck pain and radiating arm pain, also known as a cervical radiculopathy. Now, there are going to be two basic categories that, we are, that we're going to consider here. So let's get the serious one out of the way first. If you have weakness or progressive neurologic symptoms, then you're going to want to get an imaging study right away. And that imaging study is going to be an MRI. So for example, if you have neck pain and radiating arm pain, and you also notice atrophy or wasting in your triceps, for example, and you can't push the door open, or if you start noticing weakness in your grip strength and you can't open a jar anymore, then we're gonna want an imaging study to look at the underlying anatomy because something is clearly pressing on or greatly irritating a nerve in a serious way. Now also, if you notice difficulty with fine motor coordination, such as you notice difficulty uh, buttoning your clothes or uh, you notice that your handwriting is getting worse, then again, you're also going to want to get an MRI right away to rule out any kind of cervical spinal cord compression. Another worrying symptom would be if you notice that your balance is getting worse um, and you find yourself tripping over yourself as you're moving around. This could also be a sign of cervical spinal cord compression, and it would be another reason to get an MRI of the cervical spine right away. Now, if you have rapidly worsening numbness and you can't feel your first finger one day and then the next day you can't feel your forearm, for example, then this would be a progressive neurologic symptom. And again, we would want an MRI for that one right away as well. Now, if you just, just have numbness and tingling, and that numbness and tingling is not getting worse, then this becomes a judgment call. You probably don't need an imaging study right away, but it's going to depend on how you look clinically and how you present in your physical examination as to if you do need an imaging study more urgently. Also, if you feel numbness in your hand, but when the doctor touches your hand, you feel the touch, then this is less serious than if you don't feel your hand when the doctor touches it. Numbness can be an upsetting symptom, but to be actually numb to the touch is a sign of neurologic loss and is much more serious from the health of the nerve standpoint. Now, the best imaging study to evaluate you in the above scenarios, as I mentioned, is going to be an MRI. The MRI will show the soft tissues and the nerves the best. An X-ray will show bone and air, uh, but really won't be particularly helpful in most of these cases. A CAT scan could be obtained if an MRI can't be obtained because of metal in the body or pacemaker or for any other reason. A CAT scan shows almost as good of a picture as the MRI, but of course there's a lot of radiation from the CAT scan, whereas there is no radiation from an MRI. Now, the other category, and the category that is by far the most common, is a person that presents with neck pain or neck pain and radiating arm pain, uh, or just radi radiating arm pain, which you could also call a cervical radiculopathy. Um, in these instances where there's not progressive neurologic loss, many doctors will initially obtain x-rays of the cervical spine. The reason to do this, if you're going to do this, is to get an overall sense of the bones. X-rays, after all, just show bone and air. Now, the reason that I'm not personally a fan of getting x-rays in this situation is that the findings won't change the treatment course for the patient. The reason that a doctor might want to get the x-ray on the initial presentation is because, one, it's inexpensive, it's also it's easy to get, and it does offer at least some information to help fill out the overall clinical picture. For me, this minimal amount of information doesn't offset the radiation. Even though it is just a very little bit of radiation, it still is some radiation from the x-ray. Okay, there are a variety of potential causes for neck pain and radiating arm pain, but when they're not accompanied by neurologic loss, all of them are going to generally be treated initially with conservative treatment that's going to consist primarily of therapeutic exercises in the beginning. If the symptoms were to persist despite the therapeutic exercises, then the patient might need an injection. And there are a variety of spinal injections that you might be considering depending on the symptoms. No matter what the spinal injection is that you might be considering from a diagnostic medial branch block of the facet joint 
to different types of epidurals. Before doing any of them, you would want to get an imaging study, and that imaging study is going to be an MRI of the cervical spine. Now, some insurance companies require obtaining an X-ray um, before they will authorize or pay for an MRI of the spine. If this seems confusing to you, then that's a good thing. It means you're paying attention because it really doesn't make any sense. This doesn't make any sense because no matter what you see on the x-ray, you're still going to end up needing to get the MRI, and the MRI is going to tell you everything an x-ray will tell you and also a whole lot more. So, you know, the x-ray would seem to be unnecessary to get uh, from every perspective. But having complained about these rules to at least one chief medical officer at an insurance company, I've learned that it doesn't have to make any sense for it to be the official policy of a company. So at the end of the day, if you want the insurance company to pay, and if it's their rule, um, then for them to pay for the MRI, you may have to get an x-ray of the cervical spine first. But the MRI is clinically what you're going to want to get. And again, as a second best choice, a CAT scan is the next best option if for whatever reason you can't have an MRI. Okay, that's it. I hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope you've learned something. If you have enjoyed it, please remember to like this video by clicking on the thumbs up. And please remember to subscribe to our channel. If you have any questions or comments for me, you can reach me at Dr. Cooper at PrincetonSJC.com or feel free to leave a question or a comment for me in the comment section. Thank you very much.